thanks for, for the invitation. Let me briefly say that, of course, there will be challenges for antitrust authorities uh, due to the crisis, but uh, these challenges are not so different from the usual ones. So uh, I think it, it might be helpful to sort of uh, classify the economy in three different uh, sectors uh, to start with. First of all, there will be sectors which have uh, not uh, suffered from uh, the, the crisis, may also have gained, like some uh, online uh, firms, for instance. So we shouldn't expect any change uh, uh, coming in those uh, sectors. Uh, then there will be sectors uh, which uh, have uh, suffered and are still suffering a temporary negative shock. Uh, but these sectors and the firms in those sectors are likely to go back to normal after the confinement uh, will, be, will be over. So here the problem seems to me one uh, of uh, possible uh, liquidity issues. So not so much uh, you know, an increase in uncertainty, but uh, more simply the fact that there will be some firms uh, which uh, are facing liquidity issues which are you know, problems of a temporary nature. So there, you know, I would uh, urge antitrust authorities uh, to refrain from the temptation to think that the mergers might be a solution to, to those problems. Uh, given that this is a problem of temporary nature, it should be good uh, with uh, temporary interventions, such as, for instance, uh, uh, state aid aimed at uh, keeping in the market uh, firms which are efficient and which just uh, suffer from temporary liquidity uh, problems. Then there is uh, another sector uh, or another class of sectors which uh, will probably need uh, to undergo some uh, uh, market restructuring, some firms and some sectors more, more than others, uh, because there the shock is uh, uh, likely to be uh, more than simply transitory. This might go from hospitality to airlines, uh, to uh, cinemas, uh, etc. So I would argue that, uh, you know, if we were to want to talk about uh, how antitrust authorities should deal with uncertainty, perhaps we should focus on the third type of uh, sectors. And uh, uh, here, my uh, feeling is that antitrust authorities uh, are used to deal with uh, sectors uh, under uh, uncertainty, sectors uh, where uh, there are changes uh, over time, might be sectors which are in decline. In my time at the European Commission, for instance, I have uh, seen several mergers uh, in uh, sectors in decline, going from uh, steel to SPVC to others sectors where there is a lot of complexity because of uh, innovation, which matters a lot, and the sectors where it is very difficult to predict how the market uh, is going to evolve, which is uh, the, the, the digital sector. Let me more generally uh, talk about uh, this uh, third uh, sector or third type of sectors, which is uh, sectors uh, characterized uh, by declining industry. And I uh, want to make a couple of uh, points here. So I was saying declining industry, you should uh, expect indeed that uh, you know, at the, uh, at the, there will be a consolidation uh, result of, this, uh, of these industries. And there, by and large, you can think of uh, uh, different uh, processes, one in which uh, there will be mergers between the firms uh, which are uh, participating in the industry and the other one just uh, lead uh, the market uh, uh, do its, uh, its course. I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, there is uh, no guarantee that uh, uh, either of these uh, is going to lead to the most uh, efficient, uh, efficient result. So, even uh, if you let the market forces uh, operate, uh, you might have for different uh, uh, reasons, uh, sometimes firms which are less efficient, which are going to survive rather than more efficient ones, perhaps because uh, those less efficient firms are belonging to corporate groups, to multi 
multinationals, uh, they might have, uh, you know, they might receive uh, uh, credits from banks uh, for all sorts of, uh, of bad reasons. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I would uh, think that uh, there are uh, indeed advantages uh, from letting the market uh, do its course. And in particular, I would like to emphasize uh, three points. Uh, the first one, which is very important to keep in mind, is that if you authorize a merger, then uh, the market structure will be changed uh, permanently and uh, forever. So I think every, you know, there should be a precautionary principle here that would be better to, to use, if in doubt, uh, uh, better not uh, to authorize the merger. There will be uh, another, another possibility, perhaps, but uh, also keep in mind that, that given that these are industries in decline, these are not industry you, in which you can expect that uh, uh, entry will somehow be able to discipline uh, uh, the market uh, participants. So this is the first uh, reason uh, to be, to be uh, not to be lenient. The second one is that uh, one uh, of the advantages if you do not allow for the merger is that uh, the market participants uh, might uh, uh, try to find another way towards efficiency, which is uh, through downsizing and uh, uh, restructuring. If instead you allow the merger to leave this route uh, is uh, prevented. And then uh, finally, uh, I think that uh, what happens is that uh, during the period in which this restructuring process and which competition is going to take place, firms are indeed competing in the market, which uh, means that uh, buyers and uh, ultimately consumers uh, will be able to benefit uh, from lower prices and uh, from a wider ability of availability of products that uh, otherwise you might not have uh, following the merger. I think that uh, it is uh, very important uh, to keep to these conditions when you are dealing with uh, Feni firm uh, defense uh, cases. So on the first one, which is uh, that uh, the allegedly Feni firm exit will be due to uh, will happen because of financial uh, difficulties. I think it's important to recall that uh, there are uh, several conditions uh, which uh, needs to be fulfilled uh, in a cumulative way. First of all, the target the firm, so the failing firm, will have to continue to be loss making. There are no prospect of implementing a uh, restructuring uh, plan, which is going to bring it back to uh, profitability. And this is a point that I would like to, to stress the fact that uh, very often there might be uh, downsizing and restructuring, which is going to bring back uh, the firm to efficiency. And uh, third, uh, uh, the firm will not be able to get uh, further funding either from the financial markets or from uh, uh, a parent company, which might not have uh, the incentive or the ability to, uh, to, finance, it, uh, to finance it again. One thing which is, uh, which is very important is that typically when you are analyzing these conditions, what you want to do is to rely on evidence uh, which is uh, uh, predating the investigation. Uh, here uh, with the crisis, uh, you, we might have uh, a situation in which what happens is that uh, the crisis uh, is uh, uh, simultaneously uh, creating the uh, problems with the company and the, it's the reason for the merger. So it might be difficult to use uh, 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 evidence uh, uh, prior to the, to the crisis in order to understand whether the, the firm uh, is uh, in financial uh, troubles. Even so, I do believe that antitrust authorities should rely as much as possible on uh, uh, objective information, on documentary evidence, uh, etc., and to try and understand that uh, you know objectively the firm would not be able to survive uh, in independently. Um, one other point which I want to make, which is still related to this uh, first point, is that. Uh, 
uh, one, uh, when, when reviewing these cases, I think one should also look at the transaction price. I was surprised during my time uh, at, uh, at the commission that they were sometimes approached by uh, companies, uh, by merged entities, uh, claiming that there was some sort of failing firm or flailing firm. And then what you observed is that there was an enormous uh, transaction price which was uh, involved uh, in the merger. So I think it is uh, really important uh, to try and uh, link whatever claims there might be about uh, failing from defense with the price which is going to be paid because very often it might indicate that actually the firm is not uh, going to fail. Sometimes it is possible actually that uh, there is a premium which is going to be included in the transaction price due to, for instance, uh, possible uh, strong uh, synergies and complementarities between some of the assets of the uh, failing firms or supposedly failing firm and uh, those of the acquirer, in particular at the level of human capital, which might be very, very important because we know that uh, uh, if for most of the assets, uh, uh, it might be possible that if the firm fails, the uh, acquirer is going to get the liquidated assets from the market. It might not be the case for human capital because what happens is that if the firm fails, then the workers uh, might uh, disappear, might be hired uh, in uh, other companies, and this would actually create uh, the impossibility of reconstructing a successful team or the interaction between one particular team and per, uh, particular assets. So I think there is a, an effort to be made there to try and understand uh, uh, what is the reason behind a certain uh, uh, transaction price and uh, if it might be justified. On the uh, second point, that there, is, uh, there is no other less competitive uh, uh, merger which is possible. Again, I think it would be important to, to get uh, some information about whether the failing firm has uh, really tried generally to look for other, other buyers. And uh, I would uh, remind you here that uh, very often what happens is that uh, the uh, acquirer uh, which is going, potential acquirer, which is going to be willing to pay more, is probably the most uh, anti-competitive solution for, for the market. So, you know, uh, we have uh, not to forget that uh, sometimes the target company might have an interest uh, in going for this particular merger uh, because it would get more in terms of a transaction price, but at the same time, this uh, might be the, um, worse merger from the, the welfare point of view. And finally, and I will conclude with that, on the third point, uh, that is that uh, the assets of the failing firm would inevitably exit the market, I would say that it's important to recall that there are two conditions uh, behind uh, this. Uh, the first is that indeed the assets uh, should uh, exit uh, the market, or I would add the economy, because sometimes what happens is that the assets uh, might find a good use, not in this particular market, but uh, elsewhere in the economy, with uh, no particular cost for uh, the economy as a, as a whole. But the second point, which is also very important, is that uh, it must be that uh, the permanence of these uh, assets in the market must be valuable from the competition point of view. Not, so not only that they, uh, you know, they, they should exit the market, but also the fact that uh, you have to think of whether the exit of those assets from the market uh, might uh, indeed uh, lead uh, to uh, a welfare loss. And with this, I'm done. Thank you.